and gentlemen, this is Pastor Wayne Voss, and this is the Tuesday morning trumpet. Um, another beautiful day, another great day to tell people about Jesus Christ, who he is and what he did at Calvary. This is May the 23rd, 2023, and this year is just uh, skipping right along, amen, and we're just, uh, that means we're closer to the coming of the Lord. Amen. With every minute and with every minute, we're just uh, walking closer and closer uh, with him. Amen. So we're thankful for this great uh, salvation that we have. We're thankful for this great Savior that we have this morning in Jesus Christ. Thankful for the message of the cross. Thankful for Calvary and the precious blood of the Lamb uh, that was shed there that we might have this liberating truth. Glory to God and his power to live a, a righteous and a holy and a godly life. Amen. We're going to talk a little bit more about that this morning. I'm, I'm headed. If you want to get your Bibles and uh, get your pen and piece of paper or pencil or a notepad and uh, take some notes, follow along this morning. As always, I want to encourage you to um, uh, judge what I'm teaching, amen, everything that I say, uh, judge it according to the word of God, get you a good King James Bible of, of some sort, uh, word for word translation and, and follow along and judge me uh, based upon what the word of God says and not what someone uh, down the road says in either direction, amen. Well, praise the Lord. And, and once again, I am thrilled and delighted that you uh, uh, saw fit to, to join this morning, amen, and I'm just thrilled that you'd be a part of what uh, Jesus is doing uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the life of the believer, amen, and uh, I want to begin, I'm, I'm headed to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, beginning in verse 14 through verse 21, don't know how what time's going to allow, you know, and uh, to, but uh, that's why I'm headed uh, to talk about the ministry of uh, reconciliation, the ministry of reconciliation uh, this morning. That's what the Lord's laid upon my heart to deal with. But I want to forget, I want to begin uh, uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 2, amen. Praise the Lord. Let me check this thing right here. It looks like something's going on with my uh, laptop, but uh, there we are. Hey, Sister Debbie, good morning to you. Appreciate you joining us this morning. Praise the Lord. Thank God for uh, the help, mate, this morning. Amen. Praise you. Just let me know that I'm going live this morning. Amen. The other day I did a whole session and, and never put it on public. I kept it private. And uh, and so after the, 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 the broadcast, I had to change it to to uh, public, but nonetheless, amen, that's uh, all part of it, amen, we make mistakes along the way, but uh, I want to begin this morning from the heart, sharing with you some things that uh, you hear me say often, amen, and uh, uh, in a repetitive fashion, but I want to I want to share some things with you this morning, uh, and I want to begin in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and uh, I'm just going to begin in verse one, and we're just going to see what the Lord lay out for us this morning as we, as we uh, begin right here. Amen. You got your Bibles? Follow along. Amen. First Corinthians chapter two. <laughs> Boy, we you we we use this verse of scripture uh, probably more than anything else, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm not still not growing tired of it. Amen. Still uh, uh, just so very thankful for this gospel that the Lord. Uh, has given us and that we were brought in some into this gospel, the revelation of the cross uh, uh, going on about 20 years now. Time time leaves me. Uh, it's it's uh, at least 19 years, possibly 20 years ago. I'm so thankful uh, for it that he saw fit to, to bring us down here from Tennessee to Mississippi where we could hear this gospel, amen, and now we're trying to get it not only to the region of Mississippi but to Tennessee and, and literally around the world as to as many as would log on uh, in this broadcast and our Wednesday night broadcast, Continuing for the Faith, Sunday morning, and then Brother James Wilk and Brother Jonathan Melton is also doing uh, live streaming public ministry uh, on, on Facebook and YouTube as well. And so uh, we're just thankful that they saw fit to partner with this ministry and help us get this gospel out. Time is short. Amen. Whatever we're going to do, we've got to do it now. Amen. While we, what we have, 
while we have time and what we call day, while we have day, amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to be going home real soon. And it's sooner than you think, glory to God. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 1, I'm going to read, and I, brethren, Paul speaking to the church in Corinth, and said, and I, brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom. He's, he's dealing with the, uh, the, the wisdom of the world, the wisdom of men, and that sort of thing right here, amen. In much in much the same fashion as today, we deal with the same thing, uh, the, the wisdom of the world, the wisdom of men. And it's mostly wrapped up in what's called humanistic psychology. It's drifted over into the church in a big way, a huge way. They retitled it. The church now calls it uh, uh, Christian psychology or something of that nature, you know, they want to, whatever they draw from the world, they take it and they put the Jesus' name on it or call it Christian when it's really, uh, God hasn't endorsed it. God didn't uh, send it our way. It's not of God, it's of the world. Would you like to take too much of the world and, and, and label it Christian? That's the reason the, the church is so uh, powerless right now is because they're looking to things that's of the world. Amen. That's an enmity with God. Amen. Uh, the, the church is taking those things that God has cursed and, and the church is trying to bless it. Amen. Paul said in, in Galatians chapter 1 verse 8 and, time, 8 and 9, If any man come to you preaching any other gospel, even if it's an angel. He said any other gospel is what they might call gospel. Amen. He said let them be a curse. That's a strong indictment. Uh, right there. You don't want to be found partnering with any of those that would be found in that category, though, and there, and that's anyone that comes preaching any other gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel, hope to bring that out more. The gospel is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's what Paul, that's the reason he said, I'm determined. And, and, he, and he verb back to verse 1, uh, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Amen. Well, what is the testimony of God? Well, it's, it it, uh, it mirrors or it echoes what Paul said in verse 2. Amen. The reason he said, I'm determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ, the person Jesus Christ, and him crucified. That's God's testimony. Amen. Paul is 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 uh, speaking of the unction and the uh, operation of the Holy Spirit here. He's a man, but he's a holy man of God, amen, because of the blood of Jesus, amen, and he's speaking uh, the, the those words that God is delivering unto him to speak, amen. So he's speaking for God here. The testimony of God is, we find that in the word of God, amen, the word of God, <laughs> Amen is the testimony of God. What is the word of God all about? Jesus said that the, the Psalms, the law, and the prophets, amen, is in really is all that is written. Amen. Jesus said it speaks of me, who I am, and what I would do at Calvary. So that is the testimony of God. Amen. Let's get that, uh, let's have that understanding this morning. I mean, God's not talking about anything else except what he has done already for us through the death of his son at Calvary. There uh, is where he accomplished everything that needed to be accomplished for us. Amen. He done it all at Calvary through his son. That's all God is talking about. That's all the Holy Spirit is pointing us to. Amen. Jesus said when the Spirit shows up, when he comes, he's going to take a mind. What is that that is exclusively Christ? What is it that belongs to Christ exclusively? Well, it's his atoning work on the cross. It's his redeeming and reconciling work on the cross. Amen. And the Holy Spirit uh, is taking that work, uh, that exclusive work of Christ, amen, and what he did at Calvary, and he's showing that to us, not only through his word, but when we see it in his word, the Holy Spirit, is re he's, he's revealing that to us more and more in our inward man, in our spirit, amen, hallelujah. That's what he's revealing to us, glory to God. He's not revealing himself. The Holy, Jesus said that the Holy Spirit wants 
uh, boasting himself. The Holy Spirit won't present himself. He's always presenting me, Christ. Amen. That's what, so that's the testimony of God in every way, shape, form, or fashion this morning. And we should echo the same thing that God is saying. So if we preach his word, which is all about Christ, we should take the word and preach it in its proper context amen which is christ and him crucified we should view all the word through the lenses uh, of calvary amen so uh that's what makes everything clear to us now now we have a a revelation of what the word is all about it's no longer a mystery amen hallelujah we see christ now hallelujah well how do we see christ amen we say that pretty often that's a reason Peter of Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 9, where the Paul said, we see Christ. Well, how do we see Christ? Well, we see him in his word, amen? The written word, it's all about Jesus. We, we, we see him in his word. It totally describes him, who he is, what he did for us at Calvary, amen? But coming back to the apostle Paul, amen, he said, for I'm determined not to know anything among you, speaking to the to the church in Corinth, speaking to us and in, in all of humanity even today. Amen. Paul, if he if he was here today it, within his person, he is here today through the, the, the epistles that he has written to the church and to us. Uh, but if he was here today, uh, his, his message, you, you, if you sit down and listen, it's going to be all about Jesus. Everything that he deals with, Every problem and issue that the church deals with presently, just like uh, in that day and time was sin or were acts of sin or whatever the issue might be, marital problems and just so on and so forth. Amen. He's going to, to deal with those things plainly and openly, call it by name, and then he's going to bring that issue, whatever it is, over to the cross and reveal it uh, alone as being the answer. The, uh, the answer is always coming back to Calvary, allowing uh, self and, and everything that would influence the way of God. Let it all be nailed to the cross. Come back to Calvary. It's going to be his message. You have these problems, he would say, because you've left the faith. You've left the, you've left the cross. The answer is always found in, in the blood of Jesus. Life is in the blood. Amen. And reconciliation is in the blood. Amen. And we're talking about what Jesus did at Calvary. They're always, amen. So, but this, this is, uh, this message of the cross is an offense to a huge portion of the church. Most of it, 99 percent, if not more than that, it's very few, amen, that are clinging, truly clinging to the cross and the gospel. That's the way it was in Paul's day. That's the way it is today. That's the way it's always been. That's the way it will always be all the way up until the trumpet sounds and the church is raptured out of here. God's going to have a remnant. That remnant is always a small portion that's been set apart. Amen. It's been set apart because of their belief. They're believing in the truth. Amen. That's what sets us apart. Amen. But God's always have a, had a remnant. Amen. A few that would march in this glad story. Amen. There's a few today. Amen. He said, but I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Over the years, I've watched many. They start out well. Amen. But later thinking, you know, uh, persecution piled up bigger than they ever thought. Amen. The offense of the cross. Uh, you know, flesh is a huge problem. And it remains to be a huge problem. The only, the only way we can be delivered from flesh is found clinging to the cross. Amen. Because flesh wants to, uh, flesh wants that seat regained on the throne of our heart. It wants to rule and reign in our life. Amen. But the only way that we can dethrone flesh and put Christ on the throne of our heart to rule and reign. Uh, within is to to uh, cling to that cross where we have victory over flesh and all and everything that wants the Lord over us, all of the allies of sin, Amen. Sin, flesh, Amen. This world, the law, Satan himself, Amen. We have victory over all of that because of our simple faith in what Jesus did at Calvary, Colossians chapter two and verse fifteen, Amen. He he overthrew, he spoiled. 
He defeated every power, every power and principality on the cross, amen. So no wonder Satan wants the church to embrace other good things and be involved in other good activities because the, the cross is what crushed his head. The cross is what gives us victory. We're to maintain our faith in the cross and be ever so careful to not be moved away to other good sounding uh, whatever programs, concepts is thought up in the mind of men. Humanistic psychology, which is, is certainly not Christian in any shape, form, or fashion. Humanistic psychology, even Christian, you know, changing the title to Christian doesn't change its roots and where it comes from, amen. It's, it's not of the Lord, amen. So uh, beware of these things, amen. So, but I, I've watched a lot of people have to take their determined banner down because uh, uh, the persecution and the offense and people, you, you know, when you're, when you're determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified, you'll see people leave which you thought would stay with you. Amen. Uh, and, and you'll be uh, lambasted and harpooned in every shape, form, and fashion. Amen. Just like the Apostle Paul, the, uh, throughout the epistles, he bears witness to his testimony in the faith. Amen. He said, you know, I was labeled an evildoer. Amen. You'll be called an evildoer, sir. Uh, ma'am, if you're clinging to this cross because, uh, and, and not so much by the world, but by the those who claim to be Christian. Amen. Why? Because uh, they're going to see you as causing a division in the body of Christ when really all you're doing is just gathering people around the cross. Amen. But they're going to cause you, call you a troublemaker and a division maker. They're going to call you a sectarian, amen, a cult and just all sorts of things. But that goes with the turf. Amen. That comes with it. Amen. And, and Paul said, all of those over in Asia left me. Demas left me. Having loved this present world. So he, he, he was familiar with a departure from those uh, that were once in the faith. And, and uh, he was labeled as an evildoer. And uh, he would speak about the persecution and the trouble that the gospel brought unto him. But he would always say, even out of the mouth of the lion, even out of the, the mouth of the liar, the accuser of the brethren, he said, I was delivered by the power of God. Amen. I was delivered by the Lord. I was delivered by Christ out of all of these things. Amen. So being determined to, to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified is not just a little old light statement here. Amen. It's going to cost you something. Amen. And, but the thing of it is the benefits far outweigh any of the lost so-called, amen. I haven't really lost anything that I, when you look back on it, that I want to, that I want to hang on to. Paul said, forgetting, leaving those things behind, amen. I'm pressing now toward a, a, a greater mark in my life, pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And that high calling is, is more of Jesus, more of Christ, more of his image, more of his character and nature. Amen. Being, being uh, found within us. Amen. So that people can see Christ and, and not us. We decrease so that Christ can increase in us. Let me go back. He said, so I'm determined among you not to know anything. Paul didn't come preaching anything that this world has to offer, amen. Paul did not promote men who who wavered from the cross, amen. Uh, uh, Paul didn't promote, promote those, amen. He, he, he just lifted up Jesus Christ and him crucified, hallelujah. There in, uh, if we can move just a little bit, amen, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and uh, verse 14, Paul said, uh, here my page is stuck at 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14, amen, for the lo love of, let's see, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14, hallelujah, wrong, got the wrong verse, let's do this, amen, I'm going to take you over to, uh, praise the Lord, all right, here we go, this is where I want to be, this is, uh, even more clear, Second Timothy, Amen. That I just probably wrote that uh, scripture down wrong. Second Timothy chapter three, 
in, in verse 5. And, he, and here's a description of most of the modern day church. They have a form of godliness, but they're denying the power thereof. The power of true godliness and righteousness and, and relationship only comes through uh, Jesus Christ and him crucified. The message of the cross, amen, that's pointing to the cross that should be our single object of faith. So our object in the faith that gives the Holy Spirit the, the latitude to work in our life, amen. The, the faith in the cross is what opens the door for the Holy Spirit to work, amen. So he said in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5, having a form of godliness, which is where most of the church is at, it's just an outward uh, form. It's, God's not involved in it, amen, because they're denying the power thereof. The cross has become uh, an offense to them. Why? Because the cross it's going to bust up so much that so all of that which people desire to cling to, amen. The, the the cross and faith in the cross is going to come with a wrecking ball, so to speak, to bust up, mortify uh, all of those things that we're accustomed to. It's going to uh, uh, mortify. It's going to bust up the flesh. It's going to crucify us to all of that. There's going to be a departure from leaning upon the flesh to now walking in the spirit. Amen. And that's what the church despises. And it's amazing, amen, that uh, they despise the cross because it's, it's going to cause us to come to this place of exclusive faith. People want to hang on to everything that they've invested themselves in all of their life. And they, they threw a, all sorts of money into this false religion and that false thing and then to them, sold it into themselves is what they've really done. They oppose themselves. And uh, so, the, but the cross is going to correct all of that. The, the, the truth, amen, is going to hit home with all of that. And you have to turn from that and leave those things to embrace the cross and to become like the apostle Paul did and become determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. All praise God, amen. It's, it's really not a loss of anything. It's deliverance from everything. Hallelujah to gain everything that God uh, has provided us through his son. And really, it's more so than just uh, gaining the benefits, it's gaining him, how he is our benefit. Amen. He is our inheritance. He is that great treasure that's in earthen vessels. Amen. Christ is that treasure that we have in earthen vessels. We have him now. And when we have him, uh, everything that we need is coming with him. Everything that he's ever declared himself to be, he's bringing that with him. <laughs> uh, he is my savior. He is my sanctifier. He's the one. Because of him, I'm justified. Hallelujah. He's my healer. He's my provider. He's still Jehovah Jireh, the provider. Amen. The 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 Jehovah of the old is the Christ of the new. Everything that God has declared uh, himself or Christ to be, he is all of that and, and more than even what's been listed, no doubt, amen, to us right now today. He's a right now God, amen. He's not uh, a God that's, that's, uh, that's thrown his benefits off in the future somewhere. Amen. No, you, his benefits, who he is and what he accomplished at Calvary are right now. We have a right now God, a right now relationship. Anything and everything that you have need of, there should, there's no need to, for you to believe someone that there's a delay. Amen. We've been set free today. Today is the day of salvation. Now is that time. Today. If today is the day of salvation, today is the day of all of his grace, all of his mercy, all of his benefits can come today. Amen. The only thing that would separate and hold us back from that is failure to believe. Amen. Uh, and that's what God's trying to do uh, is make believers out of believe that everything that you have need of is found in the exclusive person, Jesus Christ and him crucified through faith in the cross. And you can have it today if you will believe it and only trust. Amen. But Paul said, 2 Timothy chapter 3 
in verse 5, had the, the, they have a form of godliness, but they're denying the power thereof. And look what he said. He said, from such turn away. He didn't say make buddies and piles with them. Uh, he didn't say put them on the platform and let them preach. He didn't, he didn't speak. He said, turn away from these. So Paul did not promote men uh, who wavered from the cross in any shape, form, or fashion. Paul would be looking for, for to raise up men that had the same heart and, and that he did, amen, to be determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ, who he is and what he did at Calvary, amen. Uh, there's no room for mixture. Amen. Mixture, all it's going to do is just bring death into the pot. Amen. Let us rely upon the meal. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. The, the pure gospel. Amen. Let us, remind, let us rely upon the, the truth of the gospel. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to read just a little bit more while I'm there. Amen. It's all so beautiful to me. Amen. It's all so encouraging to me. Amen. When I get, uh, you know, maybe... I uh, feel like I'm being pulled in many directions. I go back over and I read this. This is an encouragement to me, amen. When Paul, amen, the, the master church builder, amen, who, who laid the foundation uh, of the church and said, you know, I laid this foundation. He said, you take heed how you build upon. Don't just bring any other type of, don't bring any material upon this foundation that I've laid other than the message of the cross, amen. Don't bring anything else in to, to this no mixture amen god's not working in mixture he's working in in he's working in his son in faith in what he did at calvary and, and he said and i was with you in weakness uh and in fear and in much trembling amen i, I believe that that's speaking and i could be off a little bit but i don't think so i think he paul was constantly aware of the weight in this and, and of the message that he's been given. Nobody received, God gave the revelation of the new covenant and this message, the message of the cross to no one but this man. So that was a, a great uh, burden uh, upon his shoulders. Amen. To, to keep this gospel pure, he had to, you know, as I've already said, he lost a lot of probably friends in the ministry and other ministers and different ones. It probably meant a lot to him because they were, they were unable to be as determined as the apostle Paul was. Amen. Do you understand that this morning? Amen. And, and, and much trembling, amen, to keep this message pure in spite of all of these things that's tugging on him uh, to deviate. He must not deviate. We must not deviate. Amen. Uh, we must not not allow it to be twisted in our message. We must not allow it to be perverted in our ministries, amen, by embracing other things. In the moment, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, you, you, you can brush it off if you want to, but the moment that, that men are put up behind the pulpit that are not sold out to the exclusive message of the cross, when you put them behind your pulpit, that's the exact same thing as you endorsing and embracing and promoting whatever mixture that they might preach. Amen. You're not going to get to heaven on leaven. You're not going to get, uh, you're not going to arrive on anything other than the blood of Jesus alone. Amen. Amen. When that prophet, that uh, son of the prophet, amen, as uh, they, they, he brought them herbs in from the field, that gourd and that wild vine, he shredded it into the pot that Elijah that had set forth to, to feed the prophets, which speaks of the word of God. Amen. It, the, the moment that he put even a small amount uh, of, uh, of that wild vine into that pot, the word of God, it, it brought death uh, to, the, to the men that ate. And the, 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 the man, but the man of God said, bring me some meal, which is a type of the word of God. And, and meal, as we know, is made by grinding. And that speaks of the cross, Christ and him crucified. Amen. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was placed upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. The stripes there speaks of uh, what he would do at Calvary, and that we would receive healing, mainly front and center foremost from the dilemma and the disease of sin. Amen. And then we also know that he, he 
at, at the cross, he made appropriation and provision to be healed physically as well, not making light of that. But we, we it's mainly for our healing from the sin disease, amen. Physically, mentally, and spiritually, we can be made every bit whole at Calvary's cross if we'll only believe and then walk in the truth, amen. Daily walk, amen. Always hand it over to the death of Christ, amen. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 11, I believe it is. Always delivered, always handed over to death, to the speaks of the cross, amen, so that the life that Christ lived can be manifested in our mortal body, amen. What is the... The, that was was what is that spirit? What well, Jesus once again? He was victorious in his life over all those things that are trying to lord over us. Uh, over us, they tried to lord over him, sin, self, this world. Amen. The powers of darkness and even the law. Amen. He fulfilled the law. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. He's our representative man. Amen. We we're, we're brought in uh, to we we have become uh, the law is being fulfilled man, and and us because Jesus kept the law and he paid his penalty on the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. For what the law could not do, Jesus and God sent his only son. Amen. In the likeness of sinful flesh, for sin, for the sin dilemma. Amen. So that uh, the righteousness of God through Christ might be fulfilled in us. Amen. Hallelujah. But it said there in verse 4, he said, But my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, not the ways and the words of the world, amen, but the testimony of God, the message of the cross, hallelujah. If, if the person is not pointing to the cross, he's not preaching the gospel. The gospel is the cross. First Corinthians one seventeen plainly bears witness to that if, if you need a particular verse of scripture, amen. But he said, my my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Now, you know, the, the church has been so uh, saturated with false signs and wonders, amen. The church has been saturated with so much hype that when we read this, the thing that comes to the mind of most people, most people you know, is just uh, religious chaos, you know, people falling out on the floor everywhere and and uh, just all, you know, jumping pews and all such as that. And I could go on, you know, things falling from the roof and just uh, all sorts of things that are made up, amen, and they're not of the Lord. But when he speaks about the demonstration of the spirit and of the power of God, he's talking about the life-changing work that the Holy Spirit is doing within the individual uh, or as many as would have an ear that would hear the preaching of the cross, faith comes by hearing, amen, and, and by hearing the proper message, amen, if uh, whatever you're listening to, is what you believe. Whatever you're hearing is what you have your faith in. If you're hearing the message of the cross, you'll have proper faith. And if you have proper faith because you're hearing the proper message and you embrace it and believe it and walk in it, then there's going to be a operation and a moving of God. There's going to be an op demonstration of the Spirit and, and a power. Things are going to change within you. The, the You're going to take on the mind of Christ instead of the mind of the old man. All of that is leaving you. Now you're being formed into the image of Christ. You're thinking uh, with the mind of Christ now. There's going to be a change in you. Amen. You're going to be delivered. You're going to be reconciled. Amen. And, and there's going to be, you, you're a new creature, a new creation in Christ Jesus where all things are passed away and everything has become new. Now you're growing as you constantly hear this message, amen, and it's deposited deposited upon the fertile ground of your heart, now you're growing in grace in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, amen, but that place of growth is only at the cross. That's where you find the fertile soil. That's where the fertile ground's at, at Calvary's cross. If you leave the cross, you have repositioned yourself and you have positioned yourself to no longer grow with God's help, amen? You're just on your own. You're standing on your own. 
Amen. When you leave the cross, you're on your own. But if you cling to that cross and stand in this faith, march in it, stand in it, walk in this faith, amen, God, amen, has promised, amen, that he will help you and grow you and cause you to understand more and more of what was accomplished at Calvary's cross. But if you leave that, amen, you're, you're, uh, uh, you're missing out on, on all of the great things that's in store for that believer uh, if he continues in the faith, amen. Let's continue this morning, amen. Let's continue to march in this glad story. Let's continue to cling to the cross. Let's stay determined as the apostle Paul uh, was and, and, and as he taught his followers and disciples, amen. Let's learn to turn from everything else that's coming in like a tidal wave in the, in the modern day church in this last days of the church age. Let's learn to turn from everything else. And, and, the, and the, the hard thing is the enemy uh, knows who to work through to influence you the most in the wrong direction. He'll use those that are close to you. And, uh, uh, I, you know, I love all my family, but I have to turn my ears quite often for things that they try to influence me with. Amen. You have to turn from those things. Oh, Noah wouldn't allow, Noah didn't allow any of his uh, brothers and sisters, and he had many. Lamech had, after he begot Noah, uh, 500 years, uh, he begot sons and daughters, amen, Five year, 500 years. So he had plenty. Noah had plenty of brothers and sisters. He wasn't able to influence them, but he didn't let them influence him. That's the beautiful thing, and that must be us. We cannot allow uh, religious people, even if they're within our own family, to influence us and move us away. If we do that, uh, not only have we lost our soul, but we have lost our opportunity to influence them. The way you can influence these is to turn away and leave and to avoid their influence. Amen. Turn away. Uh, from these today. You can still love them, but you don't camp out with them. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he said there, that, here we go, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. So, Paul is teaching us, you know, your faith is to stand not in the wisdom of this world, not in powerless religion, not in the influences of popular preachers, whoever they might be, amen, but our, our faith is to stand in the power of God, where God is working, what he's doing, the place of his operation, and he's only operating, he's only doing, and he's only working uh, where he finds faith in what Jesus did at Calvary. Amen. Or are, are you with me still this morning? So let's, uh, we're to be, 2 Corinthians 6 and 1 says, we're to be fellow laborers with him. Amen. We're to be fellow laborers who work together with him in incorporation with his plan of redemption. Hallelujah. Amen. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 27 let me back up, amen, so we can't cooperate, we can't be uh, in right relationship with God if it's, if, it's not, uh, if it's not faith in the cross, you see, you know, true evangelism, uh, it, it, no one's evangelizing this world if their faith is not anchored in the cross and preaching the cross because anything else is not going to bring with it power for change, amen, that's what people need, change from that old way brought into the new way and where God will bless, amen. Philippians chapter one and verse 27 says, only let, so you see, we, we have a responsibility to either embrace or turn away from. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So there's things that we must know. We must know the truth to begin to walk in it and truth that you don't know can't set you free. Amen. So that's the reason it's so important that you listen to the exclusive message of the cross. Amen. God has sent preachers and ministers in this final hour to preach this message. Brother Scotty Williams, Pastor Curtis Hutchinson, Mark Goldwire, Don Ragsdale, and, and, and I could go on and on. Amen. I'm thinking about Brother uh, Rieger as he popped up on here just a little while ago. I'm sorry if I didn't say that right, Brother, and, and other ones, and uh, thinking about this 
this brother down in Austin, Texas, can't think of his name. You know, it just comes with age, amen, hallelujah. But praise God. But Paul said, Philippians chapter one, verse 27, only let your conversation, that's lifestyle, let your lifestyle be as it becomes the gospel of Christ, amen. Let it be as it becomes the gospel of Christ. So behavior is important to God, amen, and our lifestyle, amen. They were to conduct themselves in a manner worthy of the gospel and could do so by ever looking to the cross. See, the cross is going to change our conversation. It's going to change our lifestyle, and we will become a living epistle. I mean, people can not only uh, be influenced by our words, but influenced by our life. We become ambassadors of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Where our life is is uh, is wrapped up in, in in Jesus Christ, who He is and what He did at Calvary. Now, let me try to get over here to. Uh, I've got wild wow, time is flying by. Let's go to Second Corinthians. That's the way it go. That's the way it happens, folks. Pray it just it just it just time just leaves so quickly. Amen. In Second Corinthians chapter two, in verse four, verse fourteen, going as far as I can with this, and it says, "For the love of Christ constrains us." Uh, that that word constrains. There, at least that's my defin. This is my definition of it. Amen. It's the, the it's the God. It's the the love of Christ is demonstrated at Calvary. Amen. And, but the love of Christ constrains us. To me, that means to hold us together. Amen. Uh, it's His love that holds us together with Him, and then also the body as well. Colossians three and three. You're dead. Amen. You're dead and your life is hid in him. Can you see it that way? Amen. You're dead and your life, you're dead, you're dead to anything and everything that uh, through the cross, through faith in the cross, I'm crucified with him. Nevertheless, I live. Amen. But the old way, the old man, the old life, amen, was crucified uh, and I was crucified dead to, rendered dead to all of that at Calvary's cross and my life is hid in him. In him, I'm being held together. Man, I'm, I, I'm in him. Hallelujah. That's my hiding place, glory to God. Let me shout. And, and it says, amen, and the love of Christ is holding everything together. Hallelujah. That's where we find that peace of mind, amen, in that place of justifying peace, in that place of sanctifying peace, we'll also find the peace of God, amen, when we have peace with God by virtue of our faith in the cross, amen, for the love of Christ constrains us, and he says, because we thus, we thus judge, amen, that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Amen. So Jesus having died for all means that all were dead in their sin. But when Jesus died on the cross, he died there to give us life, give it abundantly, both now and forever. Amen. He gives that life to all, not just to a limited few. Amen, as some teach, but amen, but, but this great salvation, amen, is made available to all. Whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water of life freely. Amen, that water flows from Calvary. Amen, that smitten rock. Hallelujah. Amen, come and drink of the water of life. Amen, that river that's flowing from Calvary. Amen, and it says in verse 15, and, and that he died for all. Amen. That they which live, that have accepted Christ, now we're, uh, you know, we're a new creation. Now we're hid in Christ. Amen. Our life is hid in Christ. That new life is hid. And there, the judgment and the wrath of God can't touch us because we're hid in Christ. Amen. Amen. You see that? Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus by virtue of our faith in the cross. Romans 6 and 3. Amen. There's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus who walk not according to the flesh. 
amen, but according to the Spirit, amen. Those that are walking according to the flesh are looking to something else other than what Jesus did at Calvary. Those that are walking in the Spirit, they're clinging to the cross. They're determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. They're walking in that faith where they are experiencing the life-changing power of God and this liberating truth that I'm desperately trying to present to you. Amen. Hallelujah. And that uh, he says there, and, and that they should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him who died for them and rose again. See, we no longer are our own. We're no longer are our own. Amen. We belong to Jesus. He paid a high price for us with his life, with the shedding of his blood. He purchased us on Calvary's cross. Amen. And, and we came into agreement with that. Amen. How did he made us an offer that we couldn't refuse. He said, if you'll give me your sin, I'll give you my righteousness, and that brought us into right standing with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. We maintain that right standing by maintaining our faith in the blood of the cross. Amen. So, uh, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 23. Don't be moved away. Amen. Don't continue in that faith. Don't be moved away. Amen. From the hope of the gospel. Amen. So, as far as I can get with this, let me just keep going. Amen. And he said, uh, we're no longer to live uh, unto ourselves or themselves. We belong to Christ now, but to him who died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. From that point on, amen, from the time of us being reconciled by the blood of the Lamb, amen, we, we don't see uh, men as we once did. Now we see all men as souls in need of salvation, souls that sit in darkness amen uh, when we see when we see Jesus correctly when we see Christ correctly and when we realize you know that our desperate need our wretched the, the the need of our wretched soul and how much we needed a deliverer and a savior amen and when we see Christ as our redeemer and our reconciliation through him, amen. When we see that clearly, when we see Jesus, we'll be able to see humanity and, and, and with a clear perspective, amen. No matter how they treat us, amen, we see them as a soul in need of a savior, amen. That was the eyes and the mind of Christ. No matter how bad he was treated, even by the Roman soldiers, he it was a joy that was set before him to go to that cross to redeem even that evil and wicked soldier, even to redeem Pilate if they would only believe, amen. And we have to take on that same character and nature which is found in Christ. Christ, but it can only happen as we're constantly handed over to death. Amen. Not I, but Christ lives in me. Amen. Constantly being handed over and delivered unto death, the death of the cross, so that the life of Christ, his nature, his character, everything uh, that he had victory over. Amen. So that all of these things might now manifest in our mortal body, in our flesh. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the only way that can be done is through faith in the cross and in having that uh, death, amen, and that, that new walk, that new life uh, being manifested in our life, our present life in Christ, hid in him, glory to God from the enemy. Hallelujah. And he says, uh, wherefore henceforth that we know no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, but now henceforth know we him no more, amen. Uh, he's become our savior, hallelujah, amen. We, we, he's become our closest and dearest friend. He's, he's, we're no longer enemies with God. We're no longer at that enmity with God, but now we have been brought into covenant relationship. We've brought, been brought into the household of God, amen. And, and now we're hid in Christ. All these uh, great treasures that's found in Christ, amen. Life is just totally changed. 
We're not who we once were. We don't have the mind that we once had. We have the mind of Christ. Now, praise God. Amen. But it's only, it's only available. It's only going to come to us through the cross. He said in verse 17, and I could probably spend more time with verse 16, but I'm trying to get something in with what little bit of time I do have left. And he says in verse 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, out of Adam, into Christ. Amen. That's what took place at Calvary. We brought out of the household of fallen race. We've been brought into a new race. Born again believers now, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, reconciled by the by the cross and what Jesus there did. Amen. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, a new creation. Amen. We've been recreated out of the first fallen creation, brought into a new creation. Hallelujah. New birth. Amen. In relationship with Christ by faith in what he did at Calvary. And he says, all things passed away. That's that's. That's what the cross does, amen, and that's where most of the church is at today. They don't want to let go of so much of the old and embrace exclusively only the new that's found in Jesus through the cross, amen. They want to keep hanging on to those new, those old things that they invested time and space in their life. Praise God. There's not anything in my past that I want to bring back and that I want to hold on to. Amen. I gladly let it. I mean, I was in bad shape. I gladly. Well, until you come to the end of yourself and realize, until you come to the place to where you realize that you need to be saved from your exceedingly great sin. Amen. Uh, you won't uh, embrace the, the, the gospel. You'll just spend time pretending that you are what you're not. Amen. But when you get a hold of the goods and you're willing to repent of that past and realize that all of that, amen, was just a huge a hindrance in my life and you embrace the blood of the lamb, things become new, new lifestyle. Hallelujah. Old things passed away. Glory to God. Walking with Jesus. Walking with God now. Well, by maintaining my faith. It is a fight to stay there, but it's a good fight. Glory to God. Gladly have I left all of the old to embrace the new. Amen. And he said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I like new today. Amen. And he says, all things are of God. Amen. All of these new things. Amen. In Christ, they're of God. This is his plan. This is his purpose. You want to know what the purpose of uh, the, the, the what the purpose for our life is? You don't have to buy the purpose-driven lie. You don't have to buy the book. Amen. Just get in this book. Amen. God's plan and, and purpose for us is to be hid in Christ, to embrace what God's given us. Amen. To embrace the cross and to be walking with him. Amen. Through faith in what Jesus did at Calvary. That's God's plan and purpose for our life. Amen. To, to walk in the path of the just. Amen. Where that, that path grows brighter and brighter. The, the path of the just where the light of the redeemed, the light of Calvary. Amen. Grows greater and greater, brighter and brighter until that perfect day. It's a great life, folks. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. We found this treasure in earth and vessels, which is Christ in us. It's a great life. I wouldn't trade anything that this world has to has to give for the my relationship with Jesus Christ. Religion, what we see being thrown up in front of us and all around us. Amen. I thank God for this redeeming story. I thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Christ, I thank God for this new creation in Christ Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. And it says, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And has getting, now here we go. This is what I was desperately trying to get to, and I've only got a few minutes to try to, to make, uh, uh, make it clear, if I can, with the Lord's help. And he says, and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. Now stop and think about that for a moment. Amen. If, if we've been reconciled, redeemed, and saved by one way, which is the blood of the cross, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 20, 
Amen. We've been, the enmity, the separation between us and God was removed. The enmity and the separation was removed by the blood of the cross. That's clear in scripture. Amen by faith in what Jesus did at Calvary. So if, if that's how we are redeemed and reconciled, amen, our message is to be nothing but that as well. We don't, we're not redeemed by the blood of the cross and brought into right relationship to walk in Colossians 2 and 6, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus, so walk ye in him, amen. The same uh, faith that saves is the faith that works every day, amen. Just keep your faith in what redeemed you in the beginning, amen. He said, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus, so walk ye in him every day, denying yourself, taking up the cross daily, walking in that so that you can follow Jesus. You can't follow him and you won't go where he's at with, without the cross and taking it up daily, amen. And, and, and he said there, oh, praise the Lord. Uh, he said there, uh, and it has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. So that means that we're to preach the cross. Think about that, amen. We, we're not saved by the blood of the cross and then begin to preach something else. Amen. We're we're not uh, we're not we're not saved because somebody declared to us the testimony of God, which is Christ and Him crucified. Amen. And then began to testify of something else. We're not saved by uh, the, the Christ and Him crucified, and then began to declare ourselves. Amen. No, no, we are given a ministry of reconciliation, that message that comes with power and a demonstration of the Holy Spirit to redeem others and to save others. But I want you to pay close attention that word us there, Paul's including himself, right? But he's not only including uh, those ministers that were with him, but he's including the, the church in Corinth. In the same fashion, he's including us today. He's including every believer that has been reconciled by the blood of Jesus Christ. The, the work of uh, evangelism and ministry is not limited to the evangelist and the pastor and those that have been called to fivefold ministry, but it's to every believer. Every believer should be, and you have been equipped to be, uh, a, a to operate in the ministry of reconciliation, which is sharing the gospel uh, to whoever the Lord sets before you, amen. And you've been equipped to do that. Tell about Jesus, who he is and what he did at Calvary, how he redeemed you, and that he can make that same difference in anyone's life if they will only believe and will turn from all of these deceptions and influences that's out there in the world, amen. And they need to know that. They need to be, they need to know that they have to be careful what they're hearing and what church that they are setting under, amen. Uh, the only thing that's going to change their life and make a difference and bring about uh, the image of Christ in their life and to impact other people is the message of the cross and believing it, amen. And, and he says there, to wit, Amen. In other words, just as uh, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, amen, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Amen. That's the word of the cross, the message of the cross. Amen. You might see the, 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 the message of, of Christ or the, the gospel of Christ, but the gospel of Christ, if you see that in scripture, and it is there in different places, that's the message of the cross. The gospel of Christ is the message of the cross, the testimony of God, being determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. And he said there, now, now then, uh, we are ambassadors for Christ, not of the world, not of the religion, not of men, amen, and not even of the Holy Spirit, as good and great as the third member of the Godhead is, amen, and his great and vital work, amen, but he's, uh, he only declares of Christ and him crucified, amen, we're to do the same. Then, so now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us, 
Amen. Let's speak. Now, now listen to this for just a moment. Amen. And it says, as though God did beseech you or beg you by us. Amen. We pray in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled unto God. Uh, when Paul said, as though God did beseech you by us, he's, he's speaking of the message that they preached. Amen. The message of God. Amen. It's the message of the cross. Amen. So, so Paul here is preaching about preaching the cross. <laughs> Amen. That which we're, we're uh, uh, criti criticized by quite often they say well you spend all your time preaching about preaching the cross well christ paul did that he spent i gave a lot of space to preaching the cross the church you're the preacher cross the minister you're to preach the cross amen uh, hallelujah and not not involve yourself in other things the things of this world be a, a good soldier of jesus christ Amen. And don't become wrapped up in, in the cares of this life and of the world. Amen. And if we're not careful, we can begin to, to preach nothing but our troubles. You know, I got this trouble, got this hurt. Paul didn't do that. He, he made aware of the things that he endured for our benefit so that we can be encouraged by these things. Well, if Paul uh, had to go through these things, we, we surely will as well. Amen. But but he didn't he just did he did, he didn't get wrapped up in those things. He would give glory to God. Amen. I was delivered out of the very mouth of the lion. Amen. The liar himself by the by Jesus Christ himself. He saved me. He delivered me. Amen. And he'll deliver you through whatever dilemma that you're experiencing and going through for the cause of this great gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 21, for he, God, has made him to be sin for us. That speaks of Christ being a sin sacrifice, a sin offering. He didn't become a sinner. It says that. Amen. Amen. For he, God the Father, has made him to be sin for for us who knew no sin he was a perfect lamb spotless perfect lamb without sin amen but he laid his life down for us oh what a great picture of the love of christ the love of god toward fallen humanity and he even referred to it as a joy that was set before him to redeem fallen humanity, reconcile fallen humanity back to himself who, who knew he did all of this the one who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. That brings us into right standing with God, that we might be the, made the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Brought into right standing. Glory to God. Not, not our righteousness, which is nothing but filthy rags, but the righteousness of Christ. We're hid in him. We take on, we're robed in the righteous one. We're robed in Christ. We're hid in him. We, we have been given Given the righteousness of God that's found in Christ Jesus, and it comes by faith alone. Now, uh, having said that, give me just another minute or two. I want to take that over uh, to Romans chapter 1, if I can, real quick. Amen. We've been given a ministry of reconciliation, ladies and gentlemen. Every believer should be should be involved in, in, in preaching this gospel. Uh, to a lost and dying world and to a wayward and a backslidden apostate church, amen. Once again, not everyone's called to a pulpit ministry, but you can declare, you can tell what God has done for you and how he has done it, amen. Be ready to share uh, that, uh, that salvation that you have been given, amen. We're ambassadors of Christ, not of this world, amen, not of this world. Not of anything else, not of the, not of ministers and ministries, amen. Yes, we need to know what minister and ministries to listen to where we can hear this message of reconciliation and the message of the cross, yes, because not everybody's preaching that, amen, but that's not our focus. The, the focus of the ministry and the minister that God has raised up will be that of the Apostle Paul. I'm determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified, amen. And, and so uh, I want 
going to take you over now and tying this to what I've already said. I'm going to rob a few more minutes from you. Romans chapter 1 and verse 14, Paul said, Romans chapter 1, verse 14. I might be able to close here. I don't know. We'll see. Amen. He's Paul said, I am a debtor. Not here, he's not speaking of to Christ, though he did say that in, in, in Scripture, I'm a debtor unto Christ. But here, listen to what he's, what he's saying. He said, I'm a debtor, amen, and that includes every believer. Uh, Paul is our example, amen. So every believer is a debtor in, in this fashion, amen. He says, I'm a debtor, every believer, amen, to the Greeks, to the barbarians, uh, to the wise, and to the unwise, to all humanity. We, we, have, we have a debt to humanity to take what we have been given. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but it needs to be more than just dropping a couple of dollars in the offering plate, amen. It has to be more than just saying, well, I support uh, this ministry or that ministry, Amen, or, or, and that sort of thing. It needs to be more than just putting uh, money into the offering plate and just being satisfied. Well, I gave to that ministry, you know. And and, and if you're, if, well, I might as well say it. If you're if you're giving to anything other than that which is 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 uh, preaching the exclusive message of the cross, you're partnering with that false gospel. Amen. You'll be held accountable. Amen. But because you supported something that's anti-Christ, it's not of the cross that God didn't uh, that God didn't send that God's not providing you 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 will become guilty by association. You need to recognize that, amen, and be careful that you give only to those who are known for preaching the exclusive message of the cross. If you're given to a church that's known for preaching a mixture of things, no matter how they attempt to justify it, you will be held accountable for partnering with a false gospel. You need to think about that with us, with the, the judgment seat of Christ in view. Amen. Let that hit home. Think upon these things. Amen. Paul said in Romans 1 and 14, I'm a debtor to all of humanity. Amen. And, and he said, uh, he, he said so much as much as within me. Amen. And he said, as much as within me. Well, what, what is it that's in him, amen, that allows him to be who he is? Well, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15 and 1, he said, I am what I am by the grace of God, amen. Uh, so he's speaking about because, because of the great grace that's working within me, grace is God at work. He only works where he finds right faith in the right object. Amen. There you'll find the moving, the operation of the Holy Spirit. There you'll find this, the, the power of the Holy Spirit, demonstration of the Holy Spirit at work. Amen. So he said, so much as in me is, he's speaking once again, 1 Corinthians 15 and 10, if I've got that written right, the great deposit of grace within him. Well, why is it that Paul had such a great a deposit of grace within him. He said uh, that, you know, uh, I, I am what I am. I do what I do. I am what I am because of the grace of God. He said, I labor more abundantly than all of you. Amen. He wasn't boasting himself. He's just making it clear to church. You know, what I have, you can have. God's no respecter of person. But what is it that gave and it, so much grace to the Apostle Paul, what is it that, 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 that allowed God to work so greatly in this man of God? Well, you go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 2. I'm determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. And then he went on to explain, amen, that because of that, your faith will be able you'll be able to stand in the power of God as you go from faith to faith, walking in this faith that saved in the beginning. So when God finds faith in the individual and he knows that heart that's determined not to know anything but Jesus Christ and him crucified, amen, there you will find a mighty work 
of God's grace. There you will find a moving and operation of the Holy Spirit in a great way. So all of that bears witness to his faith in the proper object and being determined not to be moved away and influenced by others, amen. And the same will hold true to us, amen. And he said there, I am, Romans 1, 14, I'm ready to preach the gospel, amen. There he is again, Paul preached about preaching the gospel. I'm ready to preach the gospel. What about you, preacher? Are you preaching the gospel or are you just preaching, uh, are you just promoting another ministry? And it's sad that so many of the people, uh, preachers are nothing more than promoters. Uh, all they know to do is promote another ministry, that bigger ministry, whoever that is. Amen. They're nothing but promoters. They don't have anything to say unless it's about that ministry or that minister. Amen. Praise God. He has raised up preachers who preach what Jesus has done and what God has said in his word. We preach Christ crucified. Glory to God. That's what a true preacher does. He preaches Christ crucified. He's not out here just promoting with, with everything, another ministry of this singer, that singer, that minister ministry, that minister, no, amen, the true preacher, he's not a promoter of those, he's a preacher of Christ, amen, he's an ambassador of Jesus Christ, we've been reconciled by the blood of the cross, he has given us a message and a ministry of reconciliation, calling people back to the cross, calling people to come home, come back to your first love, and come to Calvary's cross, he said, I am ready to preach the gospel, not to you only, uh, who, but also to those that are in Rome also. If I understand right, amen, this is, uh, uh, he, he, he knew that when he got to Rome that there, uh, you know, his life was going to be demanded of him. He's going to be set on trial. His life's going to be demanded upon him. Amen. He's willing to even go there. Amen. And we have to have that same uh, attitude. You know, preachers, man, I've never seen the likes of it. You know, preachers want, they want something that's already set in place. You know, there's very few that want to get out here and labor with blood, sweat, and tears and pioneer a church in a, in a community or a region that's hurting for the gospel and has been praying. They ignore that, been praying God sent us a preacher that preached the cross and nothing else. But preachers, they, they've been raised up in such a comfortable environment where the platform's just been handed to them, amen, that no one's going out here and, and pioneering a new work. And that's sad. That's sad, amen. And uh, so, and it, God forbid, if you, you know, how about you go pay? <laughs> what if it don't pay anything? Amen. Are you still called to preach the gospel if there's no love offering, if there's no paycheck? Amen. When, when all of that stops, and I believe it's going to stop real soon, amen, when the internet shut down and the banks are shut down and the, the uh, love offerings and the paycheck stop, then we'll see who uh, are, are truly contending for the faith. Then, then we'll see. Amen. Though, no, but let, let me try to get back to what I said in Romans 8 and 14. He said, in, in, I'm ready to go to Rome also and preach the gospel wherever and God would send me, wherever that door is open. He would pray, God, open a place of utterance, open a door of utterance. Church, pray that God would open up a door of utterance for me. Amen. He was ready always to preach this gospel. He didn't change his message because the uh, the uh, uh, the assembly chant was a different assembly. He didn't go to one place and preach, you know, a, a, a message that they were geared to hear. Everywhere he went, whether it was in Texarkana, whether it was in Baton Rouge, whether it was in Greenwood, Mississippi, whether it was in Canada or Mexico, every place he went, he preached Christ in him crucified. Whatever problem they had, he would point the people to the cross as the answer. That's where you'll find it. That's where you'll find it today if you want to turn from all of those influences of trying to justify false teachers. Amen. And a mixture. Amen. And he said, he said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. The gospel of the Christ 
as I've already said, is the, is the cross, the message of the cross. The gospel of Christ is the message of the cross, who he is and what he did at Calvary, amen. He said, I'm not ashamed. Those who, who bring flesh appeasing uh, whatever it is into their message of the cross, those who deviate from that exclusively, those who, uh, who are chopping up the, a pretty gourd and a pretty wild vine, they're trying to appease flesh, Amen. They're trying to hold, uh, amen, people by patting them on the back, by fluffing their pillow, amen, and, and preaching a watered-down gospel, amen. Those are ashamed of the gospel. Those are ashamed of the gospel of Christ, amen. Those that are not ashamed of the gospel of, uh, of Christ, which is the message of the cross, though it hurts, they're not going to change their message even if everybody in Asia leaves. They're not going to change their message even if this minister leaves, even if Demas leaves. They're not going to change their message even if even if they, 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 they call you an evildoer. They're not going to change their message. They're going to stick with it. That's what being determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified means, preacher. Amen. If you, you might as well just go back to selling life insurance or whatever you was doing working at McDonald's, hallelujah, There's nothing wrong with that, I'm just saying, you, you're not really, those that are called to preach the gospel, amen, those that God has called and raised up in this final hour, amen, they're, they're, they must be determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified, or we're not ambassadors of Christ, we're not, we're not coming with a message of power to influence the people, let's keep it pure, and let's keep it powerful, let's know that old power, amen, that life-changing gospel, glory to God, trying to wrap it up here, ladies and gentlemen, he said, if I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, which is the message of the cross, for it is singular, single it, that alone, Amen. Don't 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 twist it. Don't make it crooked. Don't add anything to it. Don't take anything away. Keep it according to the word of God. And we'll see a move of God in people's lives and in individuals' lives. Amen. It's sad. Most people, you know, their their ministry's wrapped up. Well, I just got, you know, in, in mega ministry, you know, I got to get as many people as I can in. So we start feeding them hot dogs. We'll start having fishing rodeos. We do this and we do that. Every type of scheme and strategy we can think of to try to get the, but if you, if you feed them hot dogs to get them in, you're going to have to keep feeding them hot dogs. Amen. Hallelujah. We feed the body of Christ with a sacrifice. Glory to God. Saved by the sacrifice and we continue to feed the body. Those that's been redeemed by the same thing that saved them. The blood of the lamb. The sacrifice. Jesus said, my flesh is meat indeed. My blood is drink indeed. And I say, that's all you need. Glory to God. He said, for it is the message of the cross. The gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God under salvation to everyone who believes. And that speaks of a continuous believing, not just something that happened 20 years ago. Our vacation Bible school it talks about what we're walking in, what we daily believe in, what we have our faith anchored in. The faith that saves is the faith, amen, that works in our life mightily every single day. If we'll only walk in it and believe it, glory to God. And it says to everyone who believes, now look what he says. He said, for therein, therein what? The gospel of Christ, the cross, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed. Amen. And before the message of the cross came, I thought that my righteousness came because I was uh, keeping the law. I was doing this good work or that good deed or just works of my own flesh. Amen. And the power source of law, it's really all of that is law. And the power source of law is flesh. Amen. It was just me working in the flesh. And I thought because of those things, I was, uh, I was entitled to the righteousness of God. But do I learned different when I learned the message of the cross. Hallelujah. Amen. It's, and he says it right here for therein. Amen. In the cross, this gospel is the righteousness of God revealed. Amen. 
from faith to faith, amen, as it is written, the just shall live by faith, glory to God, from faith to faith, glory to God, every day, I'm, I'm walking in this faith, and as I grow, I'm keeping my faith anchored in the cross, walking in the righteousness of God, amen, walking in true holiness and godliness, amen, the church has traded holiness for height, glory to God, oh, <laughs> The church has traded the holiness of God. The church has traded righteousness. Uh, excuse me. The church has traded holiness for height. The church has traded uh, true righteousness. Amen. For the things of the world and for flesh and, and for law. Amen. Come back to the cross, church. Come back to that redeeming place. Come back to where you have been reconciled. Come back to preaching the cross again and come back to that first love. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us ever be mindful of who we represent. We are ambassadors of Christ, 2 Corinthians 5 and 20. And we have been empowered to deliver a specific message to another. Let us ever be mindful of the deceitfulness of the flesh because flesh is always desiring to rule us and dethrone the spirit with which can only happen if we yield to the flesh rather than living in the spirit, amen, hallelujah. Living in the spirit is a constant denying of self, which is flesh, through the taking up the cross. That's what Jesus said, Luke 9 and 23, taking up the cross daily and following him. Well, praise be the name of the Lord so much I've got. I'm looking at here, I'd like to share. I never have enough time. Praise God, I, I, praise that, I pray that something that I've said has been a blessing and encouragement to you today. So thankful for all of these good uh, comments that I see here, people joining in. And I pray, God, that you've been blessed today. Let me encourage you to be back with us tomorrow night, Wednesday night at 6.30. Amen. Right here on Facebook, we'll be contending for the faith. That's our Wednesday night broadcast it's going out from the sanctuary of Crossway Ministries in Greenwood, Mississippi. By the way, we're just five miles west of Walmart. Best way to show you where we live. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> where, 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 we, where we preach this great gospel. Five miles west of Walmart. Amen. In Greenwood, Mississippi on Highway 82, the door churches, the church doors will be open. Amen. At, at uh, 630, you're welcome to come in. And, and sit in the uh, in the sanctuary and be a part of that service. We'd love to have you. Can't drive too far for the uh, for the truth. And a church alive is worth a drive. Amen. But if you're unable to do that, log on tomorrow night at six thirty and join us right here on Facebook for the Contending for the Faith broadcast. God bless you. Love you each and every one. See you next time.